What's going on guys, Chad CRC back with you here today. And as Crossfire continues to evolve and everybody just keeps on cranking out money into these things, we keep on growing the selection of antennas. So depending upon where you live, what kind of flying you're doing, what antenna is right for you. Right here is a selection of all of the transmitter and the receive antennas that are available currently right now with tons of rumors and confirmations floating around that there is a lot more on the way. So let's take a look at the things on the transmit side first. Pretty much what everybody is used to is this one right here, which looks like the Immortal T, but it's got the SMA that screws on to the micro or to the regular crossfire. Then we have the tuned antenna, which came out, I guess, to support the diversity. I know some people fly with this, and I hear that is better at long ranges. Um, I have not had a lot of success with the tuned antenna, even though I do run in the L configuration now. So I might give it a shot again and see how it goes because when I was using it, I was running everything with the Immortal T antenna, either in a vertical or a horizontal plane. And this is more of a dipole. And now we have the TBS VAS diamond antenna, which the diamond antenna is equally, the diamond antenna performs equally to the standard antenna. The only thing is the closed loop design is supposed to help with people who are having issues flying in certain areas at lower altitudes. So it's not really supposed to help with distance from what I gather. It's just gonna help people that are having issues with fail safing or if they are dropping from mode two to one prematurely. It's been really cold. I haven't had a lot of testing behind the diamond yet. Um, so I'm really looking forward to it. So far, just within my kilometer to 1.5 kilometer flights, I haven't really noticed a lot of difference between the diamond and between this one right here. I will say that, like Trappy and Alex has said, is that this thing is built like a diamond. It's very solid, it's very rugged. This connector does not move. This here, I never really had a problem with. It's flexible. Um, I kind of bend it up or bend it down this way, that way, whichever way I'm flying. So I don't know if I'm really damaging it or not. Nothing spins or nothing at all like that. So it's working fine. So if you're getting good results with this, you got a few extra bucks to blow, maybe pick up the diamond. If not, no big deal. Uh, if you're running a diversity module, I guess this is still the best way to go for the diversity module, but I have not been able to confirm or deny that. So now let's take a look at the antennas that go on the quads. So the two main antennas that everybody are used to, of course, is the Immortal T or the regular dipole that it comes with. Now, a lot of people go with the Immortal T because it's, you know, stronger, it's not supposed to break as easy. These, both of these antennas are challenging to mount on mini quads. There's 3D printed options out there. There's zip ties and heat shrink and everything else to get things to kind of work and fit. It's the one downside and complaint that I have about Crossfire is that what in the heck do we do with these antennas? Like it is just crazy. And one day I know there'll be a solution. Until then we just kind of figure things out. If you take a look at this Crossfire antenna, this actually come, must have came from a newer batch of uh, micro uh, transmitters because this actually is supposedly tuned closer to the 915 band for America and I think like Australia and stuff versus the 868 band, which is for Europe. And the reason that you can tell is because it has this gray shrink tubing here versus the black. If you have the black, that is the one that is tuned closer to 868. So what I have done with all mine is what Trappy and Alex and some other people have proven. So what I have actually done is taken the seven and a half millimeters off of each end, the white and the black here, 
on the black heat shrinked ones to make them closer to the performance of this antenna here. I haven't actually been able to fly a lot to see if the gray heat shrink that's already tuned flies better than the ones that I have cut, but that's gonna be coming. I haven't really had an issue with either of them. I really haven't had an issue with the Immortal T um, either. It's just my Immortal T's, when you put them out on the arms and you put them into different places, they kind of end up getting like this. And they, the first thing that usually happens is I lose these little red, I lose these little red caps right here, um, rubber band things or whatever. Those kind of go away. Then you kind of lose your end caps. And once I lose my end cap and these, they kind of start bending on their own. Like I don't land on it or force it. It just kind of starts bending on its own. You can see that right there. So I'm not sure what's going on, but I start noticed noticing that my link quality and my, well, really my RSSI, my link quality never really goes down. If you're not monitoring RSSI and SNR on your Tyrannus, I highly recommend it because it is definitely a more telling sign of how your connectivity is versus the link quality. Link quality always seems to be there, which means it's good. But if you're not monitoring what frequency mode you're in, if you're not monitoring SNR and you're not monitoring RSSI, then you're kind of losing out on what actually is going on with your crossfire system. So I highly recommend. The other problem I have in this configuration and putting them out on the arms is I've actually lost a couple micro receivers uh, because in a crash or when you land, this stuff will get snagged. And, it, and if you don't put in the right kind of strain relief and going back again to just no real good mounting options, I've actually had this rip the, uh, the UFL connector off I usually do glue them, hot glue them down just to give them a little bit more strength uh, because I don't want them popping off in mid-flight. That's just kind of a thing that you have to do. You know, you cut the shrink wrap off to put the mortal T on there and then it's kind of open and then, you know, you can reheat shrink it or tape it and you really don't know what's going on. Um, I've just been doing all that as a safety precaution, I guess. And maybe this is just a consequence of that. But, you know, that's... What a new Immortal T looks like, and that's what a couple of my other ones look like. So if you look at my reverb here, I've been pretty happy just running everything in the L shape, and Trappy has confirmed that this is fine, and I haven't had any problems with it at all. Um, usually you can get uh, the white element um, vertical here by going to some kind of post and heat shrinking and everything like that, depending upon the frame and the build that you have. Um, usually it's never a problem to get one uh, to stick out of the back and I've not found it yet that it's had to be like perfect and these have this arrangement has always performed in my case better than just having the immortal T out on the arm um, depending upon how you're flying like if you're building a long-range cruiser and like for me I kind of fly like the same pattern over and over when I'm doing my testing and everything so I kind of plan that out where my nulls are going to be and I found that I actually prefer to have my immortal T on the front right because I'm constantly flying in a big circle like this so it's just kind of a personal thing but I do this with all of the standard type of antennas. And if I have a, a mortal T, I'll put it out there. Uh, some frames, depending on what you got, there are options to go ahead and print a 3D mount to put the mortal T uh, kind of at an angle back here like this, or uh, to put it on top of like brand 3D mounts like that. One great option if you wanna go with the L mount and to get it out away is to use a Pagoda. Um, the, the coax on the on every pagoda that I've had is really rigid and strong and keeps its shape. So you can see on this Martian here that I'm really able to get the antenna out away from the frame and I'm able to zip tie it to the pagoda in the arrangement that I want it to. This one here is a little floppy right now, so I probably need to like kind of shore up the zip ties. A little bit but again it's just kind of something that we have to deal with with the way that the antennas are so with all these antennas available and everything it kind of comes down to what you want to do and where you live and everything else like that the 
big thing though for especially for North American people is as the new uh, v, uh, the new VTXs why do I keep trying to call them VTX as the new micro receivers start to come back into stock because I know Trappy said there's a supply problem right now most of them should have this gray uh, heat shrink tubing on them which means that they are already cut and they are already going to be made for people in North America and people who are running 915 I'm not sure exactly how close to 915 they are I heard they kind of split the difference and it's like around 9900 so maybe you can still trim a little bit off and get even closer but I'm not even going to go down that road I just slapped this one on the reverb build uh, didn't cut anything actually I take that back I did have one cut. I had a black one that I put on the reverb build. So I actually haven't installed one of these in a quad yet. So gonna have to check that out actually. That's one thing to keep an eye out for. And again, you know, if your immortal T's start to get kind of banged up like this and you're just looking at link quality and everything, you might want to consider replacing it because like I said, from my experience, this kind of stuff that's going on, it might look okay to you, but actually inside your connectivity you might be losing signal and you might be losing range and we don't want to have any of those kind of issues and problems at all so that's pretty much it guys got any questions about any of this stuff let me know give me a like give me a sub talk to you later